to the all of you. Uh, my name is Harun Rashid, and presently I'm a PhD student at the Center of Atomic and Alternative Energy, University of Paris Saclay. So I'm going to begin with the talk. Uh, sorry, there is some issue with uh, changing the slides. Uh, they are visible now. Thank you. Yeah, there was some issue with the changing the slides. Yeah, it's, I don't understand it. Going on with this, yes. Can you see now? Yes. Basically, if anyone is not able to see it, they just have to change the screens. That's all. Okay. Maybe someone from the audience, can you please write in the chat box that whether you are able to see the slides or not? Yeah, okay. go ahead. Everyone Perfect. is it's perfectly all right. Perfect. Thank you. So first of all, beginning with any of the applications for like whether for masters or PhD, one has to go through the checklist of the documents that one needs to apply for any position, whether it's for masters or doing PhD. So the first and the foremost thing that one should have is holding a passport, then CV, and then it's motivation, cover letter, or what you call the statement of purpose. They are almost similar. And then it's the transcripts and diplomas of your bachelors if you are applying for masters and uh, both the transcripts and diplomas of your bachelors and masters if you are applying for a phd now uh, the uh, one of the theories that most of the students usually have is that what is the difference between this transcript and mark sheet so the transcript is basically a single document or we can say it can be of one page or two page or more than that where you have the mark sheets of all the semesters merged together and in this particular transcript the subjects that you studied in each semester on men are mentioned and their corresponding grades and for for the diplomas we know that it's the degree certificate Uh, can you unmute yourself? Uh, you are muted. Can you unmute? Um, yeah, no, it's fine. You didn't hear or it was just... No, no, just right now, just for a few okay, seconds. Thank you. So, uh, I hope you heard about the transcript that it's simply a single document where all the mark sheets of your all semesters with the subjects that you studied or mentioned it did in it and their corresponding grades. And for the diplomas, we know the degree certificates. And one more theory that students usually have here is that if the provisional certificate works here, like while applying, it works perfectly. So there is no need if someone doesn't have a degree certificate, they can use the provisional one. And for those who are studying like in the fifth semester of their bachelor's and haven't got yet their degree, they can ask their university to issue them an expected degree certificate. Now the question is what is an expected degree certificate? It's simply a document that states that this particular student is enrolled in our institute in this particular semester and he or she will be graduated by this month as per the academic calendar of the university. So anyone who is in the fifth semester or the last semester of his bachelor's can apply for masters with this expected degree certificate and similarly for those who are in masters in their final year they can even apply like if they want to do one more masters they can apply with this expected degree certificate and after that the next thing that one needs while applying for french university is the english proficiency certificate and for these some of the some of the english language tests like ielts toefl are needed 
But in case you don't have these test scores for IELTS or TOEFL, the French government accepts the English proficiency certificate that is issued by your concerned college or university, stating that the medium of instruction and examination for your uh, during your studies was English, and it works perfectly here. And in addition to these, you need minimum two letter of recommendations while applying for a master's or a PhD. And be sure that these two letters of recommendations should be given by those who, those professors or teachers who have who have taught you during the studies. It should not be like from some person who is your relative holding some good position. They don't work in academia, so you should have this letter of recommendation from your teacher who knows you very well, who can write about your uh, abilities, about your uh, like academic life, how you have been as a student. And for those who are applying for PhD, usually the PIs for whom you approached uh, as like as a PhD prospect to PhD student, they will ask you for master thesis, like your master project report to see what you have done during the masters. Now, the first step that comes when it comes to applying for the universities is shortlisting the university. And we know every one of us wants to go to the best university of any country for the masters. So here are, is a list of some of the French universities which are like, which have a very good uh, educational curriculum and the infrastructure, like University of Paris, Saclay, Sorbonne, PSL, University of Grenoble, Ecole Polytechnic, Ex Marseille, Equal normal and so on. And I would like to mention here also that don't look at the rankings of the university. You can, like, it's better you can look, but here in France, all universities are equally good. So don't restrict yourself to only these few universities. Apply in any of the universities wherever the curriculum of the course uh, matches your field of interest. And now the second step is shortlisting the courses of your interest. This is the main part of your application process. Like you have to shortlist or select a course that matched your interest and for which you can like uh, motivate, write a motivation letter mm -hmm. stating that you have some background related to that particular subject or course so that to attract the uh, like the panel who is going to evaluate your application file. So there are some websites, the generalmastersportal.com, which you can use for every country. Like when you uh, like visit this website, you will have a catalog there where you can filter by uh, choosing the country and, the, and your subject. And you can get to know about the list of courses that are available there. And second thing, for particularly for France, this particular website from the campus France, this website has a catalog of all the that the French universities offer in English. So I would suggest all of you to visit this particular website if you are applying for France so that you will, uh, it will be convenient for you to shortlist the courses and the universities. And the second way is that you know the name of the university, go directly to their uh, like master's portal website like here i have given for example of university paris Saclay and sorbonne university for the courses that they teach in english and you can easily find different courses and read their curriculum it's very very important to read the course because when you are going to write the motivation letter you have to mention what were the things what are the things in this particular course that interested you to apply for it in case you don't mention about the curriculum, it would not be good for your application to be considered further, either for the scholarship or for the admission. Now, the third is the application. Now you need to apply. Once first you selected the university, you choose the course, now it's time to apply. Here I would like to mention, here in France, M1 is known as the first year of masters and M2 is known as the second year of masters. So for those who are in bachelors and want to apply here, they can apply only in the M1 courses. 
for those who already have a master's degree and want to do one more master they can directly apply to the second year of the master which is m2 and there are two ways to apply for masters in france the first way is the campus france campus france like you visit their website you create an account and after creating an account uh, through campus france you can apply for seven universities but here in campus france there is a fee of 16500 which you have to pay like when when you create your account uh, you uh, select the seven different universities and the courses then your application will be forwarded to all the universities and the universities will review your application and give you the positive or the negative response but i recommend to apply through campus france portal because by doing so there are high chances of getting admission because i have came across many people who applied through this only thing is that there is a fee of 16500 but i would like to add that even if you get admission in france you again have to go through this campus france and apply there and pay the same fee you go through the other uh, like application procedure like apply directly on the university website and not through campus france even if you get a positive response from the university for your application you then have to get a noc no objection certificate from campus france and that time you have to pay the same amount of fee which is 16500 so for those uh, who think that they have a good cv and feel that they have good chances i would highly recommend to go through campus france because this will allow you to uh, like submit an application single time and it can be sent to the seven different universities and and the chances are good enough uh, otherwise you can directly apply for, on the university portal and for the courses timeline you have to visit either the, the campus france website or the courses and see the timeline of the application usually the timeline for the application is here is from uh, around march to july so you have to see the like timeline for each course in addition to these master courses like offered by the university there are some special master courses uh, which are like which involve the mobility which we call the mobility programs these masters programs are highly competitive and uh, are funded by the european union for these courses there are like uh, more than two universities that participate in these programs and for that like you have to visit this particular website to see the courses that are available there and nowadays the applications are open and one such erasmus course is the erasmus surf surface electro radiation and photochemistry for which the applications are already open this is for those who are interested in physical chemistry and uh, material sciences they can apply for this course and the applications are open till february and for these courses like you have uh, for this suppose i will take an example for an example this erasmus surf there are four universities university of paris saclay university of poznan uh, in poland and then is university of genova in italy and there is one more university uh, from uh, portugal university of porto so for this uh, you have to you will apply and then if you get selected you will get a fully funded scholarship from the erasmus uh, which is around 1000 euros per month and they give you even the flight tickets for the mobility like in this particular program like for, for all erasmus program you can study one semester in one university and then go to other to other country for second semester and so on so it's a very good program you will get to know with the different people different cultures so i highly recommend this program but it's very very uh, like competitive one has to be very good to get this uh, scholarship uh, can and, i add one more point here Yes, yes, yes. Sure. The thing is, what he is trying to say, the Erasmus program. But for Erasmus, you need at least IELTS or TOEFL, and for the IELTS and TOEFL, the classes will begin from tomorrow by the Kashmir guidance. That's all. Please continue. Okay. Thank you for the update. Yeah. Now the question is like the scholarship. How to get the scholarship? Like if you get the admission. it's not sure that you get the scholarship also so there are different scholarships some of the scholarships are offered by the campus france itself where you can apply with a support of an admission letter 
and some are uh, offered by the university. Like for the Campus France, there is one scholarship known as Charpak Master Scholarships, uh, whose application dates will open from 3rd January. But these scholarships are also competitive, so one has to have the admission letter first and then apply for these, uh, this scholarship. And one more scholarship is from Campus France is our Make Our Planet Great Again. This scholarship is particularly for those students who will opt for the programs that are related to our environment. So like, uh, or you need to like write a motivation letter and say that like, uh, since your program is suppose related to some alternative energies or something like that. So you have to motivate them in your motivation letter that your program is going to match this theme, make our planet green and uh, you may get the scholarship. And then there's all, also one more scholarship, it's known as Eiffel Scholarship. But for this, the deadlines are already over and you can apply next year. But for Eiffel Scholarship, you cannot apply yourself. You have to apply to a university and then you have to write to the course coordinator of each university, like course coordinator of the course that you are interested uh, in for the Eiffel Scholarship. So if they find that you have a good CV after your selection, they can nominate you for this Eiffel Scholarship, but you cannot directly apply for this Eiffel Scholarship. So bear this in mind. So one has to like, even if the application deadlines are like are near or you can have in future, like suppose if application uh, deadline is from suppose from 3rd March, that like the application process is starting from 3rd of March, 2022, but the Eiffel Scholarship deadline is 7th January. So what one can do is that you can email the course coordinator for which you are interested to apply along with your CV and write that you are interested in this particular course and you want to get nominated for this Eiffel Scholarship. And if they find your CV good enough, they can nominate you for the Eiffel Scholarship. And then there is one more scholarship known as Raman Charak Scholarship. This scholarship is for those who are enrolled as a PhD student in India. For this scholarship, you can come and work in some French lab for around six months. But for this, you need the acceptance letter from some French professor who will allow you to work in his or, in, in his or her lab. Then you can apply for this Raman Charkov scholarship. And there are the scholarships offered by the university, like the IDEX scholarship by University of Paris Saclay. For this, the procedure is like, when you apply for any program on the University of Paris Saclay, it will be reviewed by the panel. And if they select you for the program, then among the students who are selected among, uh, like then among the selected students, the panel will nominate only few for this particular scholarship because it's very competitive. And in the same way, there is MIEM scholarship from the University of Paris. If someone applies in University of Paris, they can, if they get selected, they will be nominated. They can be nominated for MIM scholarship. But here I would like to mention that this particular scholarship is only for one year. So for those who are going to do second masters, it's perfectly fine for them. But for those who want to do a two year master, like who are coming after bachelors, what they can do is that they will, uh, they, uh, what I would suggest them personally, that don't worry, come take the admission, for the first year you would get the scholarship, you can save enough like for your third semester. And in the fourth semester here in France, you all have the master thesis internship and you get paid during that internship. So one can easily manage the expenses of the second year, even if you get only one year scholarship. And then there's also master's excellence scholarship by University of Bordeaux. And you can also see like visit the website of each university to see the scholarship opportunities and for their details. Uh, just to add one more point here, just to what most of the Kashmiris did in uh, Dijon, like they were self-financed some and they just got the internship and they just managed to pay their rent and all the stuff. You can yeah, do exactly. That. Thanks, Shagilbhai. And finally, the PhD funding is in France. Like if anyone is interested to do PhD here in France, mm -hmm. there are different funding uh, like agencies. First is the doctoral school. For the doctoral school, what one has to do is that visit the doctoral school website of each university. You will see the projects being advertised there. 
then you will apply on the portal and once you apply your application will be reviewed first by the person or the professor or the researcher who has posted that particular project after reviewing the applications he will select one of the students and after selecting that particular student he or she will discuss the project with that student and then the student has to present that project in front of the doctoral school and then if the doctoral school finds that both the students as well as the project are good enough to be funded the student will be funded but here the chances are not 100% even if you are selected by a professor because it is the doctoral school who will decide whether to provide you the funds or not the second is cnrs national center for science and research there are the projects that are advert like funded by cnrs and these projects are particularly like phd projects are advertised on there is a website or a twitter account on uh, on a twitter account of cnrs named employee cnrs which is e m p l o i cnrs you can just visit their website like type in google employee cnrs or uh, see their twitter page they share the number of positions and then there is one more agency like anr agency national data research so for anr there is also a website like you can uh, type on google anr and then you will see a number of phd projects there advertised which are already funded so what one has to do apply for those projects your application will be reviewed by the concerned pi and they will go through your application and if they accept you they are going like then there is no doctoral school thing like so you just need to convince the supervisor during your interview and you get the phd and it is basically Same. national research funding yeah yeah it's an, it's like a, in india like we have ugc right yes you could say yeah that. kind of exact yeah then there is one more uh, which is a very prestigious fellowship in all europe it's known as marie curie fellowship they have a website uh, like type in google marie curie fellowship you will go to the website every year there are projects being uh, like advertised on this particular website where you can apply and this this is the highest paid phd fellowship in europe there is only one condition that for this marie curie fellowship one like if you are applying in france there is a rule that you should not have resided in that country for last 12 months so like if anyone is applying from india he can apply to any of the marie curie fellowship but those who are already in europe they have to bear in mind that one has to has not to be present in that particular country while for which this project is advertised they can't apply for it and there are some other research institutes like ca center of atomic and alternative energies like they have some their own funding fundings for phd's under different themes like focus program and there are some fundings from ministry of interior france also you can just type them in google and you will get to know so unless you don't search by yourself no one is going to help you and this is to be very honest with every one of you and then there are some double degree phd fundings like by double degree what i mean is that you are going to work in two different universities and your degree is going to be given by two different universities so your phd degree uh, will be given by two universities so it that's why it's known as double degree and for double degrees you can uh, search on google like double degree phd program and i thank you all for listening to me and now we can take up the questions or the queries or whatever you have and i will be coordinated for this question answer session by my with my colleague furkan ahmed and uh, furkan for, uh, yeah i would like to add one more thing here for those who uh, are to ask any please write in the chat box your questions it would be easier for us also to shortlist the questions because sometimes the questions are repetitive like the same question is asked by many people so it would be easier for us who can just a second i have one more suggestion if anyone yes. wants to ask questions directly he can raise or he or she can raise her you know or his or her hand then we can allow him to speak you know in an audio manner that's all right yeah of course that is fine Akhil Bhai has already posted in the chat that anyone who wants to answer any question, he can just raise his hand 
or if it's he's not you know if, or he can just unmute his mic and speak or the other thing is that he can just write a question in the chat so aap pe depend karta hai but uh, harun since we have already few questions here so i'm going to read one, one of the questions for you so akib bashir asks uh, what about fourth sem students who are pursuing btech which is eighth sem degree how does it help okay for btech students as i know one of my friend who was here after btech like you can apply for m1 here after btech since btech is five years yeah. but if you are in fourth semester i don't think you will get the degree in time like i like, don't think so, you will get in time so it's better like to apply yeah. for the next session uh, i, 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 I can add to your answer basically he's yeah. saying i am a four semester students what can they do there is a possibility which is which are called internships in switzerland like epfl or cern cern is a big name and epfl they should they can apply for internships in uh, in in switzerland or there are other university you know internships like in germany all so usually we post on you know weekly basis or daily basis then you can uh, check on the kashmir guidance group and then you will follow you can apply for the internship that's all uh, to this i would like to add sajib bhai to um, akib rashid uh, what i would suggest you to do right now is that since you are in fourth sem and it will be the probably seventh sem when you will be actually applying for the universities in france first what harun told you that's correct you can very very much apply in m1 but at the same time you can directly apply to m2 that is the final year of masters okay so your one year will be preserved so you won't waste one more year and number second that uh, what you can do right now instead of i would suggest uh, looking for internships in uh, switzerland and other uh, countries it's, it's great but at this moment i would really like you to suggest because i would really say that you are a beginner right now because you really are um, you know you really want to get into a very good university in europe so right now try to focus on your grades improve your grades at the same time apply for internships all over india probably because right now you cannot come come to switzerland right if you come to switzerland you're going to miss out on your course and they will not allow you to do that so you just uh, do internships in india try to increase your grades participate in webinars participate in um, good uh, conferences and that gives a boost to your profile and ultimately you can apply for very good universities and that too directly in m2 so yeah so uh, moving on to next question harun uh, there is uh, one question asked by uh, it's by mohammed ivan and he asks i have completed masters in geology with physics as an optional subject and i have physics as a subsidiary subject in bsc can i apply for a phd in physics so i would probably uh, want to answer that question before i pass it on to uh, harun uh, very much you can do that i come from the same background i had geology as my subject and physics as one of my subsidiary subjects as well so you can very much apply for masters but not directly to phd that is what i would say first you need to master in physics right then only you can apply for phd so basically there are many universities in france even if your major subject in bachelor's is geology but physics is one of your subject mathematics is one of your subject and they would certainly allow you to your uh, to do masters in physics i know few people who do this who have done this and uh, yeah it's very much possible harun uh, harun probably would like to add more i will ask the mic on to him yeah i guess you answered it very perfectly well and i too know some people who are from the same background in the same situation but the thing is that you have to like for phd one has to uh, have a very good experience in physics if he wants to do a phd in physics so to get that experience you uh, should do at least like six month master thesis internship in physics and that uh, that can only give you the skills and the experience that is one should have for the phd otherwise i don't think anyone here will accept you i'm sorry but this is the fact yeah so harun thank you we have one more question it's from adil and he asks what should be done after btech in civil engineering uh, maybe higher uh, studies 
I guess uh, for BTEC, uh, Shakil Bhai can give you the best advice since he's yes, the... probably. So uh, basically, uh, you can do two things. It is up to all you whether you want to go for a job or you want to go for higher studies. But if you want to, uh, for example, uh, directly once you want to apply for a job from having a degree from the India and you want to do a job in Europe, let me tell you, ninety nine point nine nine percent that is impossible, frankly. But if you have a degree from here, it is easier to get a job after that. So what you have a possibility, you can do, you can apply for a master's program and you can check for the fundings or scholarships. You can improve your profile with relevant skills, relevant projects, relevant grades, or if you have a publication, that's much more enough. And someone mentioned like kind of a you know patent. If someone has a patent, that's, that's, that's very, very good. And then after uh, finishing your master's, then you can apply for the job. That's easier. So that, that's in a general, you know, that's a general answer for everyone. Yes. Uh, the next next question. Thank you, uh, Shakil Sanu. And the next question is from uh, Samima, and she asks, "I am applying for a particular master's fellowship right now, and it is not mentioned to upload the English proficiency certificate uh, in that. I know it is required for the admission process, but my university is asking for the proof of requirement before giving the certificate. Is there any written document to show that the France university accept the English proficiency certificate?" instead of IELTS or TOEFL. So yes. I would like to un answer that first and then I'll pass it to Harun. Uh, I, I have done my bachelor's from ANU. So most of the universities in France, except for one or two courses in uh, France, particularly they don't ask for IELTS because, or they don't ask for TOEFL. Mostly what they ask is the general requirement is that you must have completed your higher education, which is the bachelor's or BTEC in English language and uh, coincidentally in India it's everywhere done in English language so as a matter of fact um, if someone needs to do that he can go to his university dean office he can ask them for an English proficiency certificate they very much give it to you they know what it is and they just provide you with that certificate and you apply uh, and you take that document use it with your university you are applying to and you're, you're, you're gradually accepted I, like like to, like. I guess I guess she, what Samia was trying to ask is that she went to the university. The university is asking her to show some proof for it. Let me answer uh, her. for yeah, it sure. that you can go to the Campus France website. There they mention the eligibility requirements for masters in France. And in that they clearly mention the like you need an English proficiency from your university. Just take a printout of that and show it to them. And you can do one more thing. If suppose for this particular university where you applied, they haven't mentioned it in the requirements, you can visit some other French university and uh, see the requirements where it's mentioned that English proficiency is needed. Just take the printout, write an application that you are applying to that university, get the English proficiency certificate and it will work for everywhere. Because I know some in like in India, some people in the administration, they ask some stupid questions and one has to deal with them in that way. So you just need to get a document from some other university from the website from the university from the website of some other university and use that. It will work. Just to add your point, just to add your point, there are two different things. Uh, one is, as you said, for example, the English language certificate for France. I know Fran France, French universities, they don't usually ask for the TOEFL or IELTS. So the sample of that uh, is uh, available on the Kashmir Gardens group in the file section. That's one thing. The another thing is you just have to get it signed from the dean or from the director of the, your department. That's all. The second thing is that these are the French universities and the French scholarship. Now, if you apply for the Erasmus, Erasmus is usually generally for all other countries in the Europe. For that, it is compulsory and obligatory to have IELTS or yeah, TOEFL yeah. exam. So yes, these I are two different that. things. Just to uh, yes, bear it in mind. Uh, thank you, Shakil Sabran. Thank you, Harun. And there's uh, one more question. It's from Ria Zamadrishi, and he asks if you could suggest some tips what the doctoral students or Marie Curie actually fellowship actually wants from an applicant. To Harun. Maybe I can answer. Yes. For the Marie Curie, I would say it's very, very competitive. One needs to have a very, very good CV. And by that, I mean you should have prior lab experience of around one year. And if you have a publication, 
then it's very very good for Marie Curie and in Marie Curie there is like the interview is like in the form of I guess in two three they do the interview in two three times like you have to pass through different levels to get the Marie Curie but it's not impossible one can do it and so you have just build your CV first and then apply for the PhD. Uh, just a second, just a second. Add, yes. To add this, to to add this, Mary, regarding Marie Curie. So personally, uh, like we, like me, Harun and Furkan, we are not Marie Curie. I mean, uh, scholars, but we are different. We are, we are funded by the different, you know, agencies. Now regarding the Marie Curie, I have some experience. So the thing is, uh, one of my close friend, he's a Marie Curie fellow. So the thing is, like, if you are applying for a doctoral doctoral scholarship, doctoral, you know, fellowship in the Marie Curie. The important thing is, as Harun said, is you should have at least experience, research experience. That's one thing. The most important other thing is for that you need at least, uh, you know, um, eligibility criteria like Eilid Stoffel. That's compulsory in this. Another thing is you should have at least a relevant course while you are applying for the program. And if you have, for example, you have done master's, you know, project in some kind of topic. And if the Marie Curie Fellowship is on the same topic, you have nine, more than ninety percent chances to get selected in that, you know, you know, uh, fellowship. Mm. That is, I want. Right. To I agree. I agree with you completely. That's very much a, a you know basic thing for Marie Curie. Your course needs to actually overlap with the you know the topic. Thank you, both of you. Uh, Rabia Altaf, she asks, is there any particular university for those who have done professional courses like dentistry? physiotherapy, etc., or we have to follow the same procedure. Uh, yeah. This question I would like to specifically ask, then I will pass it to Haru. Uh, see, there are a few courses like dentistry or anything related to, you know, medicine. Um, for these, um, most, most of the universities in Europe, they ask for the admission fees. So there, there is normally it range from 3,000 euros to 5,000 euros. But um, it's quite rare that there are some universities which, which do not do not ask for fee. So that is as much I know about it. Arrest Harun would like to add. Maybe. Yeah, I would like to add for the physiotherapy because recently I was just visited my university website and I came uh, to know through the master's program that they have that there is a course in English for physiotherapy and. For that, you need to apply, and I don't remember the timeline of application exactly. And then you can, if you have a good, very good CV, they can nominate you for the IDEX scholarship, or you can apply for Campus France scholarship. But yes, in University of Paris, actually, they have the course on physiotherapy. Rest about dentistry and other stuff, I don't know, because usually here, uh, these type of courses are in French, to be honest. Uh, yes, they are in French, and you need to pay uh, a lot of fees. Yeah, but uh, for this particular course that I mentioned, question, it's in English. The previous section. The question was: Is it possible to do integrated PhD uh, in France? Yes, uh, please. Yes, yes and, I would. Uh, yeah. came I came to know question. about it last year. Uh, I wish I would have known that in time, and I would have definitely known oh, yes. for that. PSL University, PSL mm. University offers this integrated master PhD. And you can just uh, like visit the PSL website, uh, which I don't know, uh, like you just type in Google PSL uh, yes, university, right. and they have this particular integrated master's PhD, but they will only allow you to do the PhD if they find you are good enough during master's. Mm -hmm. If your performance during the master's, is not good they are not going to take you for phd we are that in mind but yes there is this integrated master phd to add psl, like to, to add PSL okay. there is one more university which is the top in france that is called polytechnic yeah equal polytechnic so they, might have tried, prefer they yeah. also offered integrated phd so integrated phd basically they are offer it five mm -hmm. years master two years and three years phd usually average is three years but the thing is, if you fail in first year, or if you think you are not compatible enough in the first year of masters, you will be kicked out from the university. Yeah, this That's is what sure. I told you. Oh, one more thing I would like to add to what Sakil Bai said: even if you pass first of first year of masters and you could not perform exceedingly well to their expectations, they can still you kick out of the university. I know a friend. I have a friend who did M1 
in the same course the first year of masters but they did not let him to enter in the second year of masters so this this one is really competitive and you need to really work hard once you get into this course but one can consider it as an option nonetheless i have also one case we are not trying to you know uh, make you uh, you know you know to fear you with the application process and the thing is once you are out from the you know uh, kind of in um, kashmir or whatever place you are coming from then the thing is first thing is you should get you know selected then other things can be followed on thank you uh, shakil bhai uh, samima asks how to send the recommendation letters during application uh uh harun would you like to answer uh, samima she asks how to send the recommendation letters during the application yeah for the application process for the recommendation there are two ways when you apply on the university post portal some universities ask you the email address of your recommenders while you write the email address they will just send a link to them and they can write the recommendation letter online in some cases like if you if you apply for campus grant you have to upload these uh, recommendation letter you just need to take a recommendation letter from your like whosoever is recommending you on their letter pad with their signature email and phone number on it and then upload on it it depends in fact on the like university how, what is their like what do they want how do they want it to be just to just to add your point uh, like um, harun bhai said completely you know fine what is required but there is one more possibility like if you are applying for erasmus program so the thing is there are three ways basically one way is like uh, when you apply on the you know application you uh, you are prof- you enter the email address as you said so he will get a link so in the link there are two ways just to fill the columns that's one way Uh, another is uh, to uh, upload the recommendation recommendation letter written on the letter head another one is your universe your uh, you know um, professor can email you know kind of an uh, by post he can also post that is that was usually needed in erasmus when i applied by myself so that is also the possibility if you are applying for the erasmus program so th- that is i just wanted to add the third point rest of the other two points that is what what is usually done i mean 90% of the time Thank you, Shahil Bhai. Um, Said Amir asks, "I am currently pursuing B.Sc. Zoology. Uh, how is the career of this subject for higher studies in abroad? What will you suggest me to do now in order to apply for masters abroad?" I think Harun would perfectly understand this question and would like to answer that. Yeah, because I know many friends, many of my friends in the biology. So far, like biology, right now, I would suggest to do internships during your bachelor's. At least one. Six month internship, and then you can also do some online courses from NPTEL. Uh, like there is a website NPTEL Swaim, where uh, different professors of IITs have some online courses, and you get the certificate for the same. So build your CV, and then write a good motivation letter. And I will suggest to you for a program in pa- University of Paris, actually, which is M1 Human Health and Life Sciences. And then in the second year, you have different. specialization is there microbiology genetics and genomics infectious biology there are a lot of opportunities there and this particular program is very very good i highly recommend this program because i have many friends in this pro- particular program so go for it build your cv during bachelors as much as you can so that you get the scholarship because this particular course is uh, like for the put- scholarship it's very very competitive like one has to be extraordinary to get the university scholarship but you can apply for the campus fund scholarships also so and in this particular program usually here in france for many programs they don't interview the students but for this particular uh, program they will uh, like interview you first regarding your what ever you write in your cv it should there should be no lies because they are more uh, like experienced in this stuff than you so they are going to ask you each and everything whatever is there in your cv this is for everyone like whenever you are writing yeah. something in the cv you should be sure enough that you will be able to defend this stuff if you are asked during the interview uh, basically m- moving to another question which archibrace has posed i think we forgot one thing 
suppose for example you are not getting a phd position in france suppose you know you get rejected every time there is one more possibility to get the phd what, what we usually you know what, what most of the people kashmiri people have done here so if you have a masters you can apply for m2 after doing the masters in kashmir or india then you can apply for another masters and then after that when you get masters here and an internship here in the second semester then what you do you can apply for the phd it will be you know much more easier i think harun and purkan will explain this you know they will explain this better than me so i will yes, hand over to I them i can explain this like for like i also did my m2 here like after completing my masters from jamia millia islamia i came here in m2 sir program for which i already told you during the presentation during m2 you have a 6 month internship so like working in a particular lab for 6 months allows you to like have maximum chances of getting phd in france because first there is a possibility that the lab you are joining they have the phd itself there in the lab so you can just continue with them if you perform well or i know the french professors they are very very helping they will recommend you to their colleagues like within the france or within europe and i would say i hardly find anyone who did his m2 from here and he did not find a phd i am sure like whosoever does m2 here and uh, does the like and do the internship in some good lab he definitely gets the phd here so thank you mantra you. is like mantra is like just do an m2 here thank you harun we have one more question uh, it's um, from sharik meer he asks i am i hope all are doing well i want to apply for msc plant pathology is there any university which offers this program shakil bhai would you like to answer uh, the thing is uh, before i pass it over to harun the thing is there are you know um, in different universities which can offer this course uh, as harun said the best way is to go on a campus france that is because it's not only you require master you know admission it is the important thing is the funding here otherwise it's very expensive if you are not coming from a i mean kind of well of family so uh, the th- that is the one, most important thing so usually try to look for programs which uh, we, we know where the funding is possible that is the you know better way to apply in, in you know mostly all, all all over the european countries so i think uh, brother harun will you know explain it better than me Harun, can you are not uh, audible. Sorry, was it related to plant pathology, something like that? Uh, yes, yes, it was related. Okay, to plant so for the plant pathology, uh, I know uh, like one of my friend who was in the same uh, department, plant pathology, basically. Yes, they do have a course, and you can apply for that, and you can apply for. They can nominate you for the scholarship if you are good enough. Yeah, yeah there are courses. Yes, uh, Sharik. I would like to add to this that um, right now, even if Harun or um, uh, Shakil Bhai or I will tell you a particular course to apply for, for example, in MSc Plant Pathology, um, that would mean nothing because un- until and unless you research for that program, uh, you see. I'll tell you. I'll explain it to you in the simplest of words. जब आप वो प्रोग्राम देखेंगे और आपको दिखेगा कि इस प्रोग्राम में वो क्या क्या पढ़ा रहे हैं इंटर्नशिप्स क्या क्या ऑफर करेंगे कोर्स हमें कहाँ लीड कर रहा है राइट जब तक आप वो नहीं पढ़ेंगे मुझे नहीं लगता आप अपना एसओपी लिख सकते हैं स्टेटमेंट ऑफ पर्पस लिख सकते हैं क्योंकि आपको अपने स्टेटमेंट ऑफ पर्पस को को रिलेट करना है इस करिकुलम से ताकि वो आपकी प्रोफाइल को बहुत अट्रैक्टिव बनाए ताकि वो समझे कि नहीं ये कोर्स का जो रिलेटेड है इसी के प्रोफाइल के साथ आता है हम इसीलिए इसको लेंगे तो आपको यूनिवर्सिटीज की वेबसाइट पे खुद जाके देखना पड़ेगा कि ये प्लांट पैथोलॉजी का कोर्स है और ये मैं आ, आपको कह सकता हूं कि रेयरली हो सकता है ऐसा कोर्स कि जिसका नाम डायरेक्ट प्लांट पैथोलॉजी हो प्लांट पैथोलॉजी इज अ वेरी वास्ट थिंग सो यहां पे क्या होगा कि आप एक पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक्स के रिलेटेड पर्टिकुलर फील्ड के रिलेटेड यहां पे होगा कोर्स आप उसको रिलेट करेंगे अपने एसओपी के साथ तो तब जाके आप अप्लाई किया करेंगे अपनी यूनिवर्सिटीज के लिए जिन भी कोर्सेज में आप अप्लाई करना चाहेंगे सो आई वुड सजेस्ट यू टू लुक इन दोस्ट टर्म्स एट इज वेल सो ओके मुदी मजीद आस currently i am a sixth semester bsc student bsc physics uh, students and i have one publication in uh, material science uh, does it help me to get an msc fellowship uh, i would probably answer that 
because I come from same thing. So yeah, um, it can very much help you, uh, Munir. Um, a bachelor's and you having a publication in bachelor's means a lot. So you can apply to all the top most universities of Europe, particularly in France, and they would uh, transcript is publication. You have a good catching, eye-catching uh, SOP. Uh, it's definitely, and you have a good CV as well. You're def definitely going to land a uh, fellowship. So you just need to be very careful with how you compile your SOP, how you compile your CV, and research research a lot. Which university offers you what, what course offers you what. At the end of the day, uh, if you want really a fellowship, don't bo bother about the money also. As if, if this university offers a particular amount and the other university offers a lot bigger amount, right? So you you should go for the course which you really want to do, which you think which has a, you know broad prospects in the future. So it's very much possible, very much possible if you if you have a good if you have good grades, you have a publication in material science, it's excellent for your profile, and I think it's going to be easy for you to land fellowship. Just to append uh, Farkan's answer, so what is the deciding factor in you know in the selection process in most of the European universities or French universities? First of all, is you should have a good CV. In the good CV, there should be relevant skills, and you should add a column or a you know. Uh, uh, single block where you should add relevant courses uh, when you are applying for the master's program. That's very important. Another thing is you should be having done projects. Another thing, now the deciding factor is your motivation letter or what you call a statement of purpose. The samples are in the Kashmir Gardeners Pilot Section menu of Facebook group. And another is letter of recommendation. These, you know, overall will be your deciding factor whether you will be selected or not. But what it takes time to prepare a SOP, but you can find the samples on the you know on our platform. And uh, if you get through this, I think then you know it will be much more easier if, if someone is you know intending for a job or for higher studies, and then it will become much more easier you know uh, to get those things. So this was just a, a deciding factor. What is the important thing here? Thank you, Shakil. Bhai. Um, one thing I would uh, like to say on on the whole that I see there are a few. Um, bachelor students here in the in the meeting um, there are a few bachelor participants in the easiest of words agar main aapko bahut aasan shabdon mein kuch kahun abhi agar aap teesre semester mein hain chauthe semester mein hain to aapko abhi chahiye ki aap bahut zyada focus kare apne grades pe grades bahut acche lane ki koshish kare at the end of the day grades hi matter nahi karta but ye advantage ban jata hai aapke liye aapke grades jab bahut acche honge to हर एक यूनिवर्सिटी चाहेगी आपको लेना एडमिट करना सेकंड ग्रेड्स के बाद आता है जहां कहीं पे भी आपको लगे कि कोई कॉन्फ्रेंस है कोई ऑनलाइन वेबिनार हो रहा है कोई भी प्रोफेसर कोई भी टीचर आपका कह रहा है कि आ, मेरे साथ आ जाओ काम करो ये इस चीज में हम कुछ काम करते हैं कुछ रिसर्च करते हैं तो डोंट से नोट दम अप्रोच योर प्रोफेसर ऑन योर ओन ठीक है तो this this will build your cv this will build your profile i am very sure in the future also maybe two weeks from now or three weeks from now uh, the kashmir guidance uh, group will be um, hosting a session for um, how to build your cv how to write a motivation letter that can be asked by to shakil bhai he can do that and so these two things you do aap grades acche laenge aap webinars mein participate karenge conferences mein participate karenge ये चीजें आपकी प्रोफाइल को ऑलरेडी बहुत अच्छा बनाएंगी बहुत अच्छा बनाएंगी और जब आप अपना मोटिवेशन लेटर लिखेंगे जो या, या एक चिट्ठी लिखेंगे उनको कि मुझे आप क्यों लोगे अपनी यूनिवर्सिटीज में वो बंदा अकेले कभी नहीं कर पाते उसमें ऑब्वियसली हेल्प चाहिए होती है एंड इनशाला देर विल बी मेंटर्स फॉर यू विल गाइड यू थ्रू ऑल दैट एंड दे विल हेल्प यू हाउ टू हाउ टू राइट योर सी हाउ टू राइट योर मोटिवेशन लेटर सो फॉर द बिगिनर्स हु आर इन बैचलर्स राइट नाउ मैं उनको यही कहूंगा कि मतलब अभी ग्रेड पे फोकस करिए जहां पे कोई वेबिनार मिले पार्टिसिपेट करिए कॉन्फ्रेंस मिले पार्टिसिपेट करिए किसी भी प्रोफेसर के साथ रिसर्च का एक्सपीरियंस मिले लैब का एक्सपीरियंस मिले जाइए करिए बहुत अच्छा है आपके टू ऐड दिस आई वांट टू ऐड फ्यू मोर पॉइंट्स लाइक वी आर इन अ प्रोसेस टू स्टार्ट अ काइंड ऑफ वी आर लुकिंग फॉर अ यू नो अ मेंटर्स लाइक अ पैनल for example suppose anyone from kashmir who is you know whose intention is to apply for programs in europe or in any other university 
uh, like at least we cannot you know write your sop or motivation letter please bear in mind that no one will you know write it for you so what you do you can create a draft then you can email us on our email info at kashmirgardens.com or kashmirgardens@gmail.com so for example if you are from a chemistry or from a physics or computer science or whatever then we can you know send it to the relevant you know mentor so that he can you know uh, ch- you know re- you know evaluate it and see you know if you are lacking something or if if something is missing and you prepare the complete draft you require in an uh, you know in an admission and you send the link as well as your full application documents to our email we will try our best you know to evaluate and help you you know to get through into the selection inshallah sure. uh, also to mention that um ek um ek message aaya chat mein and um, this adnan adnan asks um, b um, b com on honors having 7.3 is it feasible um koi bhi percentage matlab aisi baat aisa koi hard and fast rule nahi hai ki nahi isse zyada hi aana chahiye isse kam hi aana chahiye i know people jinka 6.5 ho ke bhi unka achhi jagahon pe ho gaya at the end of the day ye aisa nahi hoga ki it's not that okay you have nine grades nine cgp out of 10 and you suck at writing your cv you suck at writing your sop no it 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 goes collectively it collects everything it 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 shows your sop it shows your um, you know cv everything at the end of the day shows up you it shows up you it you know it just shows what you're going to do so all these things when collected at the end then they you know formulate their result so just having good grades that's not it like i said good uh, good of a good cv good uh, you know experience uh, lab works and other things so you need to have all these things so don't bear in mind ki matlab ek particular type of cgp hogi isliye maine bola focus kariye zyada se zyada lane ki to maybe how will uh, i to would like to add yes for the uh, B- for the person or student who is asking regarding bcom honors if he or she is planning for mba i would suggest that for france you should for to do an mba you should have a very good hold on french because here in france in the like final year of your mba you have to do an internship and it's like near to impossible to find an internship here if you don't know french um well um that's uh, um that's enti- entirely um i mean uh, this is particularly for the MBA. case yes but at the same time uh, i have few friends who who, who didn't know french um, but they still uh, landed internships so uh, just it's also what harun said he's, he's right but uh, don't focus on the language right now if you do not know french or anything just if you ap- want to apply for the course you like the course go for it don't bother about other things uh, language ka kya hoga kya nahi hoga that's understandable at the end don't worry about it but it is also important yes i i think the session uh, it was uh, very long now before taking i think it's better to conclude and uh, before taking the last question if someone has any other question i just want to add some points the thing is uh, tomorrow will be the you know as as we said kashmir gardens has started an online you know ilets you know coaching uh, classes so tomorrow at 6 pm kashmir time will be the first brain you know kind of brainstorming session at 6 pm please join that and uh, then from thursday we will start the actual online classes uh, like the ilets and now i think it's time to conclude but before concluding we will take the last question from said amir uh, if said amir uh, yes. you can manage uh, yeah so said amir says asks uh, what is the role of college in which we are currently uh, pursuing bsc in selection abroad as some colleges are of low ranks in kashmir um it doesn't matter it really doesn't matter to be very honest i know few uh, friends they even have a scholarship they had done their bachelor's from galgotia university i would say these are good universities i will not say they are bad universities but the impression of these universities is not quite good in you know india so unless your university is not registered it's a problem but your university is registered within the correct ugc guidelines i don't think anything your your university ranking or anything matters just you matter right as my friend kali harun perfectly says at the end of the day it's how about how you sell yourself you just have to sell yourself at the end of the day aap khud ko aisa banao ki matlab jo evaluate kare aapki profile wo chahe aapko khareedna right 
So that should be the motive. The, how the university is, what it does, doesn't matter. Uh, it's it's a question for you, uh, Shagil. Bhai. Um, Munib asks, how can we join the class which is starting tomorrow? Uh, the thing is, the link is uh, that uh, anyone who has applied for the you know classes, we have emailed them the link. But if you still are interested, we can uh, you just please email us on uh, at the our email Kashmir guidance. I will you know send you the link. Please do email yeah. us, do remind us. I will send you the link. You know um, yeah. whenever you, 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 uh, we will, we will receive your email. And I, I would think, like to yes, yeah, yes sir. Yeah. One thing I would like to answer the question from Shabir. Last question: How is the opportunity of a student who wish to study PhD in management? Okay, for this, to be honest, I don't know anyone or came across anyone who is doing PhD in management. Maybe Forkan or Sh Shakil Bai, if they know anyone here. But I will definitely come back to you, Shakil Bai, regarding it, because I will ask uh, people here for this. So don't worry, I will come back to you. Yeah, that's fine. For example, uh, I don't know PhD students, but I know people who are who are doing jobs in like kind of Amazon or whatever in a big companies. But what I have done, they have done you know masters in management or finance from Paris. Yeah, in Paris, there's one of the best you know institute for the uh, like kind of um, management. So they have done it there, and they are doing you know in, they are working in a good companies like Amazon, Facebook, whatever. But to be sincere, personally, I don't know anyone who is doing PhD. We are not saying you shouldn't go for the PhD, but we are saying what we know and what we don't know. So in order to, we don't want to, you know, uh, give you a wrong direction. So please, you know, right. get in that mind. Um, to add to this, um, like I said in the, those were one of the uh, first questions asked, someone asked about dentistry, right? And the management course is also something like dentistry, anything which relates to like a business or thing. You know, you have to pay fees for it, a lot of fee, I mean. So um, the management course is usually in uh, France, even if they are PhDs, you need to pay fee for them. And it's a lot of money you need to pay. But uh, there is one university which, um, which I you know, come, came across. Uh, it's uh, one, one university, it's in Toulouse. There's one city in France, Toulouse. And it offers PhD in um, management and it's free of cost. So probably if you are very much interested in it, you can contact it and you can ask us later what the university is or what's the process like. So that can be done as well. I think we took your lot of time from Brother Furkan and from Brother Harun. I know you are busy with your schedule. Furkan is busy with the exams and Harun is busy with the you know PhD presentation, all the stuff. So I thank uh, both of you for having a wonderful session. I hope it was insightful and uh, much more, you know, enriching session uh, for our Kashmiri brethren. And the thing is, um, if we have missed, um, I just want to tell the uh, participants, if we have missed anything, please don't hesitate to write us on our email so that we can improve, the for, you know, improve our further sessions. And I, um, it is better, and now I think it's time to conclude this session. And if anyone wants to see it again, we will, you know, post the recording uh, in a day or in a two on the YouTube channel, Kashmir Guidance, and on the Facebook Kashmir Guidance group. We will post it shortly, inshallah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, Thank you, for, you know, having a wonderful time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Goodbye.